All right, folks, I'm Rich Foley. You're watching PBS Books coverage of AWP 2018 and a wonderful event here in Tampa, Florida. And I am very privileged right now to be sitting with Gregory Pardlow, who is a 2015 Pulitzer Prize winner for this book, Digest. Digest, yeah. And you have a new book. Uh, Digest is a book of poems. You have a brand new memoir and essays mm -hmm. called Air Traffic that comes out pretty soon, April 10th. April 10th. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, first of all. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we just talked that there's a stack of your book right behind us right now at AWP that people are picking up yeah, and yeah. taking with them. And you talked about being nervous about the release of this book, even though you've been writing poetry that digs into your life for a long time. There's a, yeah, there's a different kind of attention with the poetry because I'm thinking about form and I'm thinking about the, the line, my attention, my focus is on the language itself. And so the content, what's revealing about the poems seems secondary to me, but the, in writing the nonfiction and writing the prose, there's a, another different kind of, I don't know, nakedness, I think, uh, vulnerability to, to the work. There is, well, and, and, and you're just now starting to talk about it. April 10th is just around the corner. April Here we 10th are. is right around the corner. <laughs> and this is a book that we should, we should explain the title, Air Traffic, or maybe yeah. you can do me a favor yeah. and explain the title sure. for us. Sure. So my father was an air traffic controller in 1981. Uh, the controllers went on strike. And it's surprising, actually, how few people remember, either remember it you and certainly certain how many age. generations yeah. do, have no idea of, uh, that this occurred. In 81, the controllers went on strike for better wages, uh, fewer working hours, uh, better work conditions in general equipment. Um, and Reagan, rather than negotiate with the union, he was, a, he was in office maybe six months or something, or eight months rather, fired 13,000 federal employees. Um, and it was, a, it was a bold move, obviously. Uh, and he filled the positions with the skeleton crew of you know, former managers and military people, and you know he kept the he kept the airlines moving slowly, but enough that people were just angry at the air traffic controllers. And so I, we lived through this strike. My family lived through this strike. It was a big blow to my dad, obviously, in terms of his personality and character. He thought of himself as an air traffic controller. That was his identity. It was a big blow to me seeing my dad. You know, being defeated so publicly in, by the President of the United States, you know, it's like, and that's really how I saw it. It was my dad against Ronald Reagan. Um, and it obviously had a lot to do with a big impact on my sense of myself as a, as a man, as a, as a father eventually, as a, uh, as a citizen, as a, um, uh, a labor sympathizer. Yeah, yeah you, you write about, I mean, you've written about fatherhood and, and, right. and ideas of masculinity for a long time. Yeah. And I think this book adds so much context to some of your poetry. I, I, I mentioned to you earlier that it, when, after I read Air Traffic, I went back to your poetry yeah. and reread a lot of what I read in Digest. And you, you find elements that make more sense yeah. after seeing and reading the real context behind your life and some of the challenges you face. You know, what's interesting I, that you make me think about it. Um, one of the things I perhaps didn't want in the poems and thinking about what's making me nervous about the book coming out is in the poems there's always a kind of plausible deniability you, you know hide. it's, it's, it's all yeah. I can hide behind the the art right but then bringing the the evidence of the the memoir into it yeah people are inclined naturally inclined to to read the to read the biography in the work right and with the poems again I can. I always tell people, readers, you know, that's that's a speaker. It's not me. I I go in different directions with the the presentation of the character on the page, um, but obviously it's coming out of my head. So it's it's my work. It's my experience, and then bringing the overlaying air traffic, overlaying the memoir onto the poems. Yeah, the pieces come into focus in a in a very different way. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can I can understand the fear. At the same time, there's a there's fearlessness in this book, to write about your father this way, to write about yourself. That's a great point, yeah. So, so, naked, right. so nakedly, and, and to, yeah. to just put it out there for everyone yeah. to see. And when you were writing it, your dad was, he your was still alive. not with the, you anymore, right. but he was he, alive when you were writing it. You knew you were going to write this book. He, well, we worked on it together. I, yeah, you I, interviewed him. I interviewed him yeah. uh, until it was difficult. By the end, it was difficult for him to stay on the phone for very long. So a lot of our communication was through text messages. No. You write about the, the diminishment of your father after right. the strike, um, and he was a strong human being always. And even in, even after the strike, he he 
was that way with you um, yeah. and would sort of not give an inch, uh, even when you were achieving amazing things like winning the Pulitzer, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, but that strike changed him, even though he went on to a successful second career after that to some degree where he was a union well, leader. Well, you know, how do, we, how do we define success? I mean, and I say that the same way about, I think the same way about failure, you know, it's, it's all subjective. Um, and from where we're sitting, he, it was a, a tremendous comeback and, and he managed to, he kept the family together, he kept the roof over our heads, he kept us fed and, and healthy and, and, and happy relatively, I mean, you know, despite his really overbearing personality. So from when we're, where we're sitting, it, he was successful, but I think in his mind, he was, he was always a failure. I don't think he ever recovered from the, the strike. And in fact, when he started working for, he went to SEPTA, which is the, the Philadelphia transit system. Um, and he lost that job because he was smoking pot. You know, he was, he, and he'd always smoked weed. And, and uh, there was a random drug testing at SEPTA and, and he lost that job. And then he went to New Jersey Transit and, and he stayed there for a long time and worked his way back into the union. Um, but even by the end of that job, he was just, he was never satisfied. He never felt at home, I think, in, in any of the jobs, any of the work that he did. And at the same time that he was feeling as a failure, as you mentioned, you were coming into your own as a young man and, and pushing very against difficult. that. Yeah. And the tension between you wanting to sort of be who you are and to be who you wanted to be mm -hmm. and to feel confident in where you were going and in yourself and in judging your father, because you're old enough to now know that. Right. Your father was trying to, remind you of your place, you know, yeah. where you belong yeah. and, and not to, I, I think you said something in your poetry about <laughs> outgrow Get above my raising, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Which will, you know, maybe we can refer to in a little bit, but, mm -hmm. but that was, that tension in that book was when things started to spin, spin yeah. out for you too. I think that's one of the projects that I'm sort of working on in that book is, is trying to figure out that tension because I admired him and I absolutely loathed him as a, as a teenager, certainly. And I, I think that's common, not in a way that I think is um, undeserved or, or, or uh, unusual. And I also know that he loved me very much and, you know, like many men, had no way of, of showing that. And, and so there was some fear uh, in me running off to the Marine Corps, for example, some fear of, of what, I, what the world had in store for me that it was gonna kick my behind the way it kicked his. And so, yeah, that, that complicated love that, that uh, certainly exists between any parent, but I think to, particularly between men, uh, fathers and sons. Is, but for you to go know. dig and find that understanding, you said your dad loved you. I mean, mm -hmm. there are maybe others who would have a tough time feeling that. Um, you talk about mm -hmm. at, at one point in the, in the book, uh, after you won the Pulitzer Prize, your mom threw a party for you. And your, first of all, your right. dad didn't reach out to you. And, and, um, and then when he did, it was basically to suggest that it was him, you know, that was the reason for your success right. and that, right. which is maybe true to some degree, right? Yeah, but like yeah. at the same time, <laughs> at that moment of your moment. And yet you found in yourself, mm -hmm. the ability to go back and look at this subject, your father and your life, which became complicated as well, with mm -hmm. such patience mm -hmm. well, and that's, understanding. That's the, the job of the writer. So I, then I, I teach and... In your own wanna, family, it's a little harder sometimes though, right? Absolutely, yeah. right, to take, take my own medicine. And, right. and um, yeah, and so I, I took it as my project to see these characters, Greg Jr. and Greg Sr., as, as objectively as I could to understand the relationship between them as characters. And, and I think that's part of the tension in the book too, is, is my trying to abstract myself, my own emotional yeah, investment in the situation. That's wild right. to yeah, think of your yeah. own life as yeah, one of the characters yeah. on your pages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a poet, you do it all the time. As sure, you said, exactly, an art form, exactly, but exactly. Here, you, you're writing about... <laughs> it's yeah. me in a very different way, yeah. yeah. Mm. You, you, you write also really openly about some of your own troubles and some yeah. of the struggles you had. Um, That's actually easier to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> alcoholism <laughs> right, and, and, right. and the devastation that can have in your family yeah. and, and the collateral damage uh, yeah. of, of your father's the sort of 
that 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 matchstick moment that created with the strike mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this effect yeah. divorce with your with your mother and mm -hmm. your father and your brother uh, having to go through his own intervention in a really right. public way and on, the, on right. television on an A and E series I think yeah um, but really you see that sort of domino effect that something like this can have and so the recovery I'm, yeah I'm also interested in the the generational effects of of anything in society so there's a the kind of sociological argument that I'm, I'm making in the book right that um, in a sense my dad is right as you say I am who I am as a result of the way he lived his life as a result of the way my grandfather his father lived and so all these these generations have impact um, and I'm also trying to find the, the individual. So what am I responsible for? What can I own of my own success and failure? You know, how much personal responsibility is my territory? And, and how, how much can I, how much resentment can I, you know, legitimately hold for, you know, outside influences? Well, you wrote that um, in, in, as part of your alcoholism treatment as part of the 12 steps. I mean, that you had always had a tough, tough time reconciling. Yeah. And that this was step, step four, four. Yeah. Uh, that you were going to dive in. And, and this was this was the a a fearless inventory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The fearless inventory. Mm -hmm. And you, now you're going to be walking around, you know, with this draped all over you. And I, I'm curious how it feels as you're as mm -hmm. you're going through it. Well, and, I, and not just I, now, but when mm -hmm. you were writing it on paper. I wasn't really present to Again, now you know with the book coming out, it's just it's a different reality. And writing the the, the essays as they, they were originally, they were separate standalone essays. And writing the essays, I it was just me and my craft. I you know I didn't really think about um, any kind of judgment. And I tend not to think about readers judging me personally. I'm more concerned with readers judging the quality of the of the writing. Um, that's what I'm interested in, and, and that's what. Uh, that's what I continue to, to focus on. Um, readers, there, I can always find readers who want to judge me and my sort of moral authority or my, my moral rectitude in some way. That's fine. I'm, I, I try not to concern myself with, with uh, that kind of judgment. Yeah. What was the process like when you were writing the book with, with your dad interviewing your father? Did he want to control that presentation or was he open you to know, everything you were doing? So what's fascinating about that is he was at a point, he was obviously, he had chosen to die, right? He, he knew this was... He, after 65, he, he was after like, 65, he was, he, yeah, he was still there. <laughs> right, right. He had like set it, 65, <laughs> He I'm said out. it was a clock, right? <laughs> and he's like, what's going on? Am I yeah. still around? So there was a, a kind of um, openness that he arrived at this, this almost zen kind of, uh, uh, I can't call it clarity, but, but certainly openness that he, that he arrived at when I was interviewing him. And he was fine with talking about things that during our lives together, he would never have, have opened up about. Did he acknowledge the sort of oppressive nature of some of the elements? He did not. Did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That he did not. No, he wouldn't. Yeah, he didn't take responsibility for, and I, you know, and that's another, that's part of the, the conflict, you know, as a, as a kid, I wanted him to, what, apologize? What do we want from our parents? Um, and then what? What good does that do me? I still have to deal with my own demons, right? And so there was a, I guess I was looking for a kind of detente, a kind of balance and, and uh, um, uh, acceptance, uh, in those exchanges, you know, toward the end as I was interviewing him for the book, I wanted him to see me as a, uh, as a fellow father and, and uh, I, I, I'm reluctant to say peer, because I, I, that would you never happen. Go there you yet. could get, you yeah. know, I can't even go there There's in my imagination, right? Senior, yeah, there's still Junior. a Greg Senior. He's, he's still Big Greg, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even and that's, head. he's gonna be Big Greg forever. Yeah, and, and how can I, he's also Big Greg in my writing imagination, so the, that critical voice, we were talking about the um, vocabulary and how his vocabulary words kind of run, fly into my head, Right. certainly as I'm writing. That was a, almost a punishment when, or he, you know, he would teach a word to you and you had to. You he had thought to, of it as a, 
Well, it was a creative he was punishment. He was teaching. Yeah, he was this was, this was right. his way, right? Yeah. Um, you would learn words from him. I mean, what you're, and, and they, they still stay with you, these words. Yeah. I'm sorry, I wanted to explain because it was such oh, a yes, of course, of that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his criticism is also on my shoulder as I'm writing. He's like, well, why are you writing that? That's, that doesn't make any sense. And, and, you know, that's, he wouldn't call me stupid, but, you know, the implication is certainly there. And so part of my uh, evolution as a writer is also getting a, an objective relationship with that critical voice that shows up as my dad, as Big Greg. Yeah. What I, I told you when I was reading the book that you can't help but project some of your own yeah. foibles and some of your own life challenges and your own family relationships on top of yours. And it, they bring out something in the reader. When you're writing uh, something as personal as this, this, this memoir and essays, are, are you thinking about the universality of it all? Are you, are you working towards creating something or are you really just telling your story well, and I'm trusting telling that the, you're going to hit that universal tone? Well, there's, yeah, there's a combination of that. So I'm, I'm telling the story in a way that reveals that I'm, I'm looking for, I hope reveals that I'm looking for what is universal about this. And certainly the way we talk about race is so sort of um, calcified uh, so that when we think about it, our, the, the, the discourse goes in, in one particular way. And I wanted to think about these characters as African-American men, but also as American men, and, and um, write them in a way that gives the reader some access, gives a broad range of readers access to these characters. Uh, I lost my train of thought, but... When your dad you know, died, yeah. was there a feeling of relief? Was there a feeling of sadness? I mean, like this, is, this goes to something that everybody understands with, with a troubled relationship with a parent or a loved one. That it, does it get easier when they're gone to, for you to step into that role that you, of that person you are? No, it doesn't get easier. Um, when, and there was, I'd like to think there was a, a kind of peacefulness that, that I experienced when he died. Uh, but I still find myself arguing with him. I still find myself wanting to, to bring him back into the, my conversation. Um, yeah, and I guess this, this speaks to this idea of, of universality, is, is finding the balance between this character that I have such a profound relationship with, seeing him as representative of his time, which he very much was representative of uh, a set of values that I think were very common across you know, a number of demographics. Uh, yeah, just kind of find, find a balance. Well, Air Traffic, A Memoir of Ambition and Manhood in America by Pulitzer Prize winning poet Gregory Pardlow is a really deep and powerful book. Thanks. And uh, Thanks. I know you say you're kind of nervous about walking forward, but it, it really had a huge impact on me, and uh, I can't thank you enough for visiting us today here. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, really thanks so much. It. Yeah.